Welcome to Intelligent Automation Radio, the number one podcast for IT executives seeking insights on the impact and opportunities for innovation that automation is delivering to businesses around the world. Featuring thought leaders in AI, machine learning, orchestration, security automation, and the future of work. And now, on with the show. Welcome, everyone. My name is Guy Nadivi, and I'm the host of Intelligent Automation Radio. Our guest on today's episode is Philippe VA, Group Leader, Energy, Utilities, and Chemicals at Capgemini, the world's second largest consulting firm by revenue, based out of Paris, France. We've never had an expert on energy, utilities, and chemicals on our show before, but there's a lot of interesting things going on in this space with regards to automation, AI, and machine learning. So we reached out to Felipe and asked him to join us, and he graciously accepted. Felipe, welcome to Intelligent Automation Radio. Thank you, thank you so much for interviewing me, Guy. Uh, this is the appropriate moment since we have collected answers from 500 energy and utilities executives, and we have published May 20th, a point of view on intelligent automation for our industry. Thank you. So let's talk about some of those findings, Felipe. What are some of the biggest ways automation, AI, and machine learning are impacting the energy, utilities, and chemical industries today? Uh, first of all, uh, energy and utilities are considering a lot of use cases for core businesses, processes, and support functions too. Uh, it seems, uh, thanks to our studies uh, in this sector, but also in other industries, that utilities are ahead of other sectors. Uh, 38% of utilities, energy and utilities players, report at least one use case, use case uh, which has been deployed at scale, and 15% multiple use cases at scale. But these figures show also that, for the moment, only a minority of players have been able to scale up their intelligent automation initiatives. For which benefits? In average, the answer is that 30 to 35 executives report an operation boost uh, compared to 15 to 30 percent in other sectors. 35 to 50, uh, there is a range because uh, we have multiple KPIs uh, uh, around these uh, benefits. Uh, uh, 35 to 50 percent of uh, executives report a top line growth and 70 to 80 percent increase in customer satisfaction which is also ahead of other industries and our calculation and you will find it on the report we have published today uh, is that there is a potential savings range from 200 billion dollars to 800 billion dollars uh, depending on the way you consider automation and intelligent automations. More than 30 use cases were reported in core functions and for 50 for support functions. Some examples, uh, forecasting, uh, weather forecasting, load forecasting, uh, the typical example in core functions, grid behavior interface, energy storage, storage, energy trading, in which you have a lot of automa possible automations. Vegetation management, meaning intelligent tricketing for uh, transmission and distribution operators. Complaints management on the retail side of the business. Customer chatbots, on top, of course, of the classical and well-known predictive maintenance uh, that is quoted in any, any energy and utilities player. All should be starting with quick wins, uh, low complexity, but, but tangible results. This is the landscape of uh, potential benefits of AI and automation. So let's talk a little bit about that greater landscape. Between June 2014 and January 2016, oil suffered a drastic decline in price, dropping by about two thirds, which led to many layoffs in the energy business. And in addition to that, it was estimated in 2015 that over the next five to seven years, 50% of the workforce would be retiring, leaving behind a huge talent shortage. How has this massive personnel turnover affected adoption 
of automation, AI, and machine learning in the utilities, energy, and chemicals businesses? Two questions, in fact, uh, Guy, uh, here. The first one on uh, oil prices drop, which was artificial. Huh? It was artificial because OPEC and Russia wanted to kill U.S. shale oil producers uh, three years ago. Uh, it obliged uh, U.S. shale oil producers to make uh, efficiency progresses, and they used automation for that. Uh, but this war is uh, today over. All prices are more comfortable for all the players floating from 60 to 80 uh, dollars per barrel and should remain at that level if we uh, trust the analyst with uh, demand growth, depends on the economic health of the planet. Uh, we are not at the peak oil. Huh? And uh, international political tensions, uh, President Trump against uh, Iran and US Iran waivers. Um, on the last part of your questions, uh, in our views, uh, the adoption triggers for intelligent automation, for automation, resides more in technology adoption and performance improvement targets than in uh, dealing with aging workforce and retiring personnel consequences. Uh, energy and utilities players are focusing on quick wins, as I already mentioned, uh, rather than automating to replace uh, aging workforce. And the answer, and this is uh, uh, good question that the talent related challenge remain even with a high level of automation. Of course, not the same skill shortage, but uh, skill shortage uh, again. Felipe, you are one of the co authors of a Cap Gemini report called the Digital Utility Plant, which found that only 8% of utility companies have operations which could be described as digitally mature. Uh, perhaps this is at least partially because so many utilities have natural monopolies uh, structurally shielding them from competition and insulating them from the need to automate or to innovate. What do you tell utilities executives to persuade them that now is the time to become what Capgemini calls digital masters or innovation leaders by implementing AI, automation, and machine learning? Um. The publication of this digital utility plant you mentioned was a long time ago in 2017. Two years is a very long time for digital transformation. And we have observed since that uh, growing appetite for uh, digital operations to save costs up to 20, 30% savings potential. Uh, digital operations for uh, centralized generation assets decentralized generation assets, renewables, and also uh, transmission and distribution networks. Uh, so this potential for digital operations is today the top priorities of the players when they go digital, and they are all going digital. They have all started by the customer experience. When you see, for example, EDF, the French uh, leading utilities, the second largest utility in the world, they are going full blast in nuclear engineering, digital transformation, and they are trying to create a digital twin for each reactor, new reactor or to be retrofitted reactor to expand their uh, li li lifetime. Uh, this is a huge project and a huge investment, but, but very, very profitable. When you see smart grids deployment at scale after years of experimentation, in several world leading distributors, uh, NL and Edis, for example, in Europe and uh, uh, many in the US also. Uh, this is a clear signal that energy and utilities are really moving forward on the digital transformation route. So our arguments are to push concrete success stories related to techno leverage, not only AI, RPA, but also IoT, cloud, and other digital nuggets to help decision makers to move forward with obvious use cases, low complexity or big profit potential, uh, easy to develop and deploy on the three pillars of the customer 
experience digital operations and new business models around digital transformation, but also on worker enablement in any section. Uh, the selection of key use cases by, based on their value is very, very useful to select the appropriate uh, 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 initiatives uh, with which you uh, should start. Now, Felipe, you, you mentioned costs there and automation, AI, and machine learning are often applied as ways of optimizing resources and cutting costs. In the utilities industry, though, I understand these technologies are also being touted as the basis for entirely new services. So can you tell us a bit about some of the more interesting use cases Capgemini is involved with where automation, AI, and machine learning are creating new revenue streams for utilities? Yes, uh, let's start with some use cases and with uh, the profits that can come, come out of their implementation and their deployment. Uh, just a, a long list of uh, possible use cases. I will bring uh, say six to six to eight. Uh, online self services and self uh, sales, smart charging, smart discharging for electric vehicles, uh, energy management uh, solutions, uh, softwares for building for grids, uh, microgrids. Automated demand response for getting uh, access to flexibility to better manage the load and the demand. Uh, smart lighting, uh, transactive energy solutions, offers personalizations, and far more. What kind of KPIs uh, the energy and utilities are considering when they get uh, through these new business models, these new revenue streams? First of all, the answer is that 47% of them, of the executives, answer that they can get quicker access to customer data and more reliable customer data. 41% uh, of them uh, insist on the faster time to market. 45% of them, uh, an increase in inbound customer leads. Uh, and 40% of them in quicker break-even for these new business models. Very, very tangible results in which uh, the utilities are really engaged and uh, they have demonstrated this value. According to Capgemini's March 2018 Automation Advantage Report, 46% of firms are refraining from innovation due to concerns about cybersecurity. Felipe, what impact are concerns about cybersecurity having on utilities executives' decision to move forward with the kinds of digital transformations that automation, AI, and machine learning can produce? First of all, uh, electricity, gas, water, oil are critical assets in any country. And it's not because of digital transformation. They are critical assets. Uh, meaning that energy and utilities players are used to deal with cybersecurity threats, with threats in general and cybersecurity threats, which is particularly true for exploration, production, generation, transmission, and distribution. This is uh, less, less uh, real for retail and energy services. So they start by selecting uh, uh, cyber-proofed or certified platforms with uh, the national agencies certifying uh, uh, cybersecurity of some products. And they work also mainly with serious players, well-known for managing uh, cybersecurity threats, uh, system integrators, for example, and really taking account into account these uh, cybersecurity threats. It seems that these threats don't prevent them to move forward, uh, which is good, but can make the automation project longer and more expensive. But that's it. Uh, they have no choices. Huh? They want to move forward. They have to move forward to get the value out of uh, the intelligent automation projects, uh, and they have to manage, uh, on the other hand, uh, cybersecurity. You were quoted in La Tribune is stating that of the 40 plus energy suppliers in France, ultimately only three to four major players will survive. 
You then encourage them to accelerate their digital transformation in particular by making better use of AI. What are the top three ways, Felipe, that you would recommend that AI, machine learning, and automation be used by utility companies to survive into the future? In European markets, which are open to competition since more than 20 years now, uh, all European markets, this is a mess. Huh? And you see uh, 40 competitors in France, uh, 70 in UK, uh, far more in uh, Germany and in uh, Austria. Uh, and only three to five will get uh, a market sh- a significant market share uh, and some of them are dying every day uh, in the countries uh, the, the the smaller ones considering ai machine learning automation um, our recommendations are to move forward with quick win first then evaluate and choose carefully pragmatically uh, intelligent automation use cases uh, which can be the more profitable or the more interesting in terms of competitiveness uh, in the market. To integrate and optimize the right processes for deployment and deploy at scale as soon as they have demonstrated the value of their use cases. Uh, Quick wins are uh, the most profitable ones, but uh, more complex. And finally, to involve their workforce, to invest in their capabilities, to put the money on the table, huh, to be successful, uh, and to drive a dedicated change management program around uh, these new processes that which change the life of their workforce and also the way they interact and uh, sell uh, to their clients and the new value they can bring to the market. Aside from uh, doing those things because you need to to survive, is there a single metric other than ROI that best captures the effectiveness of automating IT operations in the utilities, energy, and chemicals businesses? In fact, uh, as already mentioned, we have three dimensions, uh, uh, customer satisfaction, operation boost, and top-line growth. And for each of them, in our paper, you will find... uh, about 10 KPIs uh, and probably more in some energy and utilities players uh, on which uh, you can make a real measurement of your successes. Depending on the chosen use cases and uh, which can be divided uh, in this second circle of KPIs, uh, let me give you an example for each uh, pillar, customer sat, operation boost and uh, top line growth. Customer size satisfaction, you can reduce uh, the number of steps in customer interactions. You can improve uh, your customer experience through faster response. You can be more customized to your customer needs and uh, bring the appropriate answer. On boosting operations, you can definitely improve your workforce efficiency and agility. And you can measure that uh, with the related KPIs. On top line growth, uh, uh, I have just mentioned before uh, the typical uh, KPIs, quicker access to customer data, faster time to market, increase in inbound, inbound uh, customer leads, uh, quicker break even, and so on and so forth. Chatbots or virtual support agents are playing an increasingly important role in the automation of IT operations by enabling end user self-service. What do you envision, Felipe, will be the role of virtual support agents for companies in the utilities, energy, and chemical sectors? (coughs) Virtual support agents can bring various and obvious advantages to a company in IT, but also in many other uh, domains uh, or operations, core businesses, uh, support functions. Let me bring you some, choose an example. Uh, Applications diagnostic, uh, customer credit check, real-time conversation with your customer analysis, uh, payroll management, employee data management. Uh, Finally, a lot of use cases you will find uh, uh, and a lot of virtual support agents you will find uh, in our in our paper too. 
Felipe, for the CIOs, CTOs, and other IT executives from utilities, energy, and chemical companies listening in, what is the one big must-have piece of advice you'd like them to take away from our discussion with regards to implementing automation and AI for their operations? Difficult for me, uh, Guy, to answer with only one. Uh, generally, these profiles, uh, meaning uh, CIOs, CTOs, uh, IT executives, they don't need explanations or particular focus on intelligent automation potential and advantages because uh, automation started very, very early uh, in the 80s, uh, 90s uh, to automate their uh, information systems. They all, when you interview them, they all have one or two compelling stories to tell about the, the gains, the savings they have recorded through these technologies on data quality, on uh, application diagnostics, on monitoring protocol compliance. If I were just to mention one or two benefits, I would say, first, reducing complexity the number of applications. We have seen a lot of energy and utilities players moving from thousands of applications to hundreds of applications. And this is really the ability to simplify the portfolio of their applications. And the second one I would mention would be cost saving on the run, on the run side, uh, which is very important today. Huh? Uh, servers, infrastructures, uh, uh, the run is very important and sh sh shrink shrinks uh, their ability to make more developments. So this is cost saving on the run to enable more developments. One last thing, Felipe. Please tell our audience once more about the report Capgemini just issued and how they can get a hold of it for themselves. So you go to capgemini.com, uh, you have uh, industry specific uh, reports and you will find uh, on energy and utilities chemicals these reports published May 28th. Uh, you can download it, you can download also an infography of this report with the key figures of the report. Uh, uh, again, we have interviewed 500, 540 executives from energy and utilities, specifically on this topic, intelligent automation. And you will find a ton of figures in this report, 40 pages report. And we will be very pleased to engage a conversation in any country with you around this topic and around our great experiences and also our fails. Uh, on uh, bringing intelligent automation to life uh, in many utilities and what are the advantages, the gains that we can report to you. We'll be sure to include a link to that report also from our website uh, along with this episode so people can download right uh, directly from there. All right, that's all the time we have for on this episode of Intelligent Automation Radio. Felipe, merci beaucoup for coming on to the show and giving us great new insights on the state of automation and AI in the energy, utilities, and chemical sectors. We've really enjoyed having you. Thank you, Guy. Thank you, and enjoy reading this report and uh, going through uh, intelligent automation for the benefit of your companies. Felipe VA, Group Leader, Energy, Utilities, and Chemicals at Capgemini. Thank you for listening, everyone. And remember, don't hesitate. Automate. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. We publish new shows regularly, and you won't want to miss one. And please remember to give us a rating. It helps others find the show. Intelligent Automation Radio is sponsored by IEHU, the leader in intelligent automation solutions for IT and cybersecurity. You can get more information about IEHU by visiting our website at IEHU.com. That's A-Y-E-H-U dot com. Ayehu, creating the successful path to the self-driving enterprise.